Hello everyone, this is Artist and Tony, and this is going to be a video for our Apprentice Path series on our Artists in School of Construction. And so this is mainly for our apprentices. We love to teach history along with the construction methods. And so I thought what I would do is take our sample house that we're working on in a previous video, we talked about foundations and floor framing. And so now I want to go over kind of the history of subfloor systems and talk about the evolution of those. So going way back in time, uh, some of the earliest forms of building floors was literally just taking um, old timbers and using them for joist and you can go back and research log homes even the the very first method of building a floor system for a log home was just taking some logs and kind of giving them a flat spot on top and they wouldn't even be this close together maybe two feet on apart or whatever and then they would take rough sawn lumber and lay them across not even at a diagonal Okay, so that's several hundred years ago. <laughs> and so that kind of evolved into more modern framing systems in maybe, let's see, maybe the turn of the century. And at that point when we started using joist, you know, rough sawn lumber for joist, you would see these uh, just planks, rough sawn planks cut and laid down at, at first they were still even laid perpendicular uh, to the joist the very early systems uh, and they would have these just gaps between them and sometimes you would see felt paper underneath them but most likely not um, then it kind of evolved into uh, this where they would lay them at an angle because they uh, figured out that this would be a little stronger and also uh, start to lay down a system for other flooring systems to go on top and so we'll move our flooring systems back 10 feet so what they would do is lay down these just a random width so these would be one by sixes one by eights one by tens whatever they had from the sawmill and sometimes they were rough sawn, sometimes they weren't. They would run them at this 45 degree angle. And this is all the way up through to probably the late 40s, 19, yeah, 1940s. So this was done for a long time. And then they would put felt paper down. Some, most of the time you would see felt paper put down on top of this before, before the wood flooring system would be put on top of it. And then of course the wood flooring was ran across, you know, perpendicular to the floor joist to start to build up a, a, a system that was pretty strong. And this went on for a long time. Uh, this went on till probably the early fifties. And then in the early fifties, we moved, moved to a, a plywood system and a plywood subfloor system and it was mainly a half inch what we would do and i say we i was probably the last generation i started in 1978 i was probably the last generation of carpenter to use this system before it converted over to the modern system uh, we would put down a it's almost like a sacrificial layer of half inch it was a thin layer of cdx plywood and this was this would allow you to have a platform to work on. And you know, if it got wet a few times while you were building it, it wouldn't really hurt that much. It would delaminate sometimes a little bit and it was kind of wavy to walk on. But there was always this plan to come back and put another layer, unfortunately, of the, one of the worst building materials ever invented, particle board, <laughs> on top of it, okay? And you wouldn't put this particle board down until you were finished with probably almost even sometimes the drywall. I even remember putting this down sometimes even after the painting was done. And what it was was a preparation for the finished flooring, which would either be 
in those days, most likely in the living areas would be carpet because carpet was starting to come into to be popular, especially shag. <laughs> and so this would be put down before the carpet. And what it would do again was these two layers would act as a, a composite subfloor system uh, to make it strong. Uh, the problem with particle board is, is that if it got wet at all, the glues in it were not very dependable and it would basically turn into mush. I've literally torn out floors that had particle board in them that we just scooped up the particle board with a shovel <laughs> and just put it in a barrel, you know, a garbage bag and hauled it off. That's how, that's how bad that material was. But then in the nicer homes, you would see hardwood floors in like the uh, dining room and living rooms. But then in the kitchens and hall, I mean, I'm sorry, in the, in the bedrooms and hallways, you would see carpet. And then in the kitchens and bathrooms on this type of system, you would most likely see a vinyl or a linoleum flooring. And in the more expensive homes, you would see tile, you know, ceramic tile, or even some kind of clay tile. And so then in the, in the mid eighties, I think Advantech was uh, invented in 1983. I was involved with the changeover from this system uh, to this system and it was greatly appreciated. The modern building materials are, are such, such a joy to work with. Um, Advantech is used with, you know, high quality glues, uh, this, it, I've never seen it come apart. This, this system can get rained on multiple times before you get your roof dried in. It will tend to swell up just a little bit, but it doesn't affect uh, the, uh, really the, the structural qualities uh, of it. It does have a, a tongue and groove. And one thing I'm not showing here is the spacing that it has, I'm gonna grab these two sheets. And the way the tongue and groove work on this is that it automatically spaces it out probably a sixteenth, something like that. There's a little tiny space there, maybe three thirty seconds, not sure. But the tongue goes in and forces uh, this. You can't, some people will just keep beating on this, you know, when we install this, we lay it down. Of course, we put glue, we put subfloor adhesive on top of the joist first, and then we lay this down. And then you'll take a two or four and you'll pound it in because these uh, grooves are kind of tight sometimes. But people will turn around and see this gap and they'll go, and this is like, you know, new newbies. Uh, so I'm telling this to my apprentices, don't do that. Once you, once you see this tiny crack, you're good, okay? It's a self-spacing product, which was never really done in these products, and that was part of the downfall of this system, was people would jam the plywood up against each other, and then it would get wet and expand, and then it would buckle up, and you know, that, there you go. So the modern systems are, are very, uh, effective and as far as thicknesses like this particle board uh, would be five eighths so then you would have a half inch subfloor and then five eighths particle board and on the new systems we have this is 23 30 seconds just basically by the time you account for the glue you can about you can account for about three quarters of an inch of subfloor it's very strong uh, long lasting and um, a modern miracle really <laughs> but how it's installed is you start off with the tongue against the band the outside here because you don't want to be beating on this tongue well with your two before so you lay it with the groove this way uh, so that when you lay your two before down out here or a block to to bang it with your um slate chamber you don't obviously have to do that on the first row there's nothing to bang against, but when you start pushing this in, there's a little bit of resistance. This, you know, this tongue is tight in here, so you'll have to tap it 
we'll, we'll call it a, a, a friendly tap of the sledge hammer and, and lock it in. That takes us through uh, many years of evolution, which obviously we've improved these things over the years. Now it's kind of funny if you're wondering why these toilets are sitting out here in a, a previous a video, the one where I talk about floor framing, we talk about the need to uh, check your locations of your toilet drains and that's how you start your layout. You, you probably noticed that there's not 16 inches here. Well, smart carpenters will determine what their offset should be based on where their toilets are. And generally speaking, if you've got two or three, you can work it out. You just have to uh, think a little bit. That's, and of course, all this is planning and uh, something that should be done before uh, you build your house or you start a construction project. Even if you're, even if you're the contractor and uh, it's like if I was building this house, now I know exactly how many floor joists I need. And in a minute, uh, when I stop uh, filming this video, I'm going to finish out the Advantec on the entire floor. And then I'll know exactly how many sheets of Advantec to get. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a break real quick and I'll finish up the Advantec on this floor and I'll come back and show it to you finished. So there you go. I got her all done. And I guess the only thing I will mention is that you need to think about how you're starting your sheets when you first start laying them out. Let's see if I can grab that layer there, that group I made. I'm going to, I'm just going to scoot it over and we have these, this offset. Uh, you'll just have to look and make sure that you're using your sheets the best. You obviously want uh, uh, most of the courses to be staggered half the width. So the field will be that way, but you'll just adjust the ends so that they make sense. You don't want a little tiny piece down here and you know, you, you just want to get it as close to a half sheet starting off as you can. So there's your subfloor and there's sort of a short history of subflooring systems up to modern times. I'm sure in the future we'll come up with even better materials because that's what our construction industry in the United States does. We like to be the leaders and we, and to be the leaders, we got to be out there thinking about better ways. And this is what an artisan does. If you're going to be an artisan, you always have to be willing to learn and teach others and be thinking about the future and how we can improve. So thanks a lot and we'll see you in the next lesson.